I got a client who's looking at buying this bad boy, right? This is a house with four guest cottages in the back. Before he drops his coin, though, wants to know if the deal makes sense. That's what I'm doing. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Your boy, James Wise. All things Cleveland real estate. All things Northeast Ohio real estate, right? Local cats, cats from out of state, cats from out of the country, right? Whoever you are, whatever you want to do, whatever your real estate investment strategy is, if you are trying to do so in Northeast Ohio, odds are good we can help you out. We do it all, folks. We do analysis education here on Holton Wise TV. We could ensure any property in ohio unless it's like a house you're gonna live in in which case like fuck off because i don't do that all right landlords we insure landlords i don't care about your suburban home no i'm not gonna like quote you a policy for your boat don't don't care don't do that right we shop around for landlords for insurance property management right construction maintenance same thing don't don't contact holton wise asking us if we come build you a deck at your house no no we do construction for the houses we manage. Come on, people, landlords, right? Landlords, that's who we work for, right? And I got a local landlord. You went and toured this property, check this bad boy out, you're very interested in buying it, but before you drop your money, you wanted my take on it, right? So it's a single home uh, with four cottages in the back. Okay, that's pretty unique, something we haven't uh, <clears throat> really seen. Here you go, one, right? Cottage one, cottage two, cottage three, cottage four. I just did a deal uh, recently in Lorraine, where it was like a uh, it was like a duplex with a cottage, then another cottage. Okay, and that deal so it ended up being four total units. And that deal we were able to do a residential loan, by the way. Okay, uh, for two reasons, uh, I had to actually split it up into two residential loans. And this is big. This is important for your deal. Uh, which, by the way, uh, this is this is for Mike, my man Mike. Sorry, Mike. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is for my guy, Mike. Uh, you toured this one already, brother. And uh, th this is going to be a little different than that one, right? That one specifically, okay? Uh, we had a duplex and a cottage on one parcel, which we then were able to do one residential loan. And then on the other parcel, the last cottage was there, and the buyer had just paid cash. We, like, worked out, like, you know, they listed it in one listing like this is, and, you know, we came to, like, X price, and then after that, his lender's like, hey, uh, I can't do uh, I can't do this all in one loan because it's on two parcels. Uh, we got to split this up into two sales. And then what we did is we backed up a bunch of the pricing into the one parcel, and we got the second parcel down to, like, ten grand. and he actually didn't get a second loan on that. He actually just paid cash, right? So we turned one deal into two because there was two parcels, and he was able to get – uh, a residentially financed loan on a large portion of the sale. You, however, sir, are in a different boat. You have five, five houses here, and it's all on one parcel. So you're not going to be able to do any type of residential loan. Okay, you're going to be stuck with either commercial loan or paying cash. So keep that in mind. That sweet 30 year financing is probably not in your future, right? We can't break it up that way. It's one parcel. OK, and it's over the limit of four. So remember that. OK, five total units. It also means you got five roofs. OK, you got five furnaces and you got five hot water tanks, which, by the way, you had told me uh, in your your notes to me, you said it's going to need new furnace and the one house needs a new hot water tank. Just so you know, every time you do a furnace, you're looking at like three to thirty five hundred. Right. Uh, after COVID, prices have been going up a little bit. Hot water tanks, you're looking at one to like twelve, thirteen hundred. Okay, again, the twelve, thirteen hundred is like post-COVID world pricing. Uh, furnaces last about thirty years. Hot water tanks last about fifteen. So I know you toured this property already, but when you get a home inspection, you want to get your inspector to give you the ages, the rough ages, right? So if you got twenty-five-year-old furnaces and you got five of them. No, like in the next probably five to ten years, you're looking at like 35 times five, right? So I don't know. What is that? 
5,000, nope, 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 30, let's just do 35 times 5, you know, you'd be looking at $17,500 worth of new furnaces coming your way, right? And hot water tanks last about 15, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, but these are pretty cool little spots, and it is a septic, and you actually sent me like a closer picture of the septic. You had some questions on the septic. Uh, you sent me another picture that's not in this listing, but it was just like a picture you took of... Uh, when you were there touring it, and you asked me some questions about the septic. I don't really know much about septics, bro. Uh, we got a huge portfolio of Holton Wise, and I think we only, like, on the business side of things, have only ever dealt with, like, two, maybe three septic tanks. The most experience I've ever had with a septic tank is I'm currently building uh, a big house for my family out in the country, and that's got a septic. Uh, in my allowance for that <clears throat> with my builder, it is like 20, 22, 23,000, 20, 21, 22, or 23,000, somewhere in there, right? Uh, so that's how much like a brand new septic system is going to cost. Uh, you can get a separate septic inspection if you want, if they're willing to do it. Like they pump it out and they inspect it. But you got to understand, dude, septics like have a life expectancy of like 40 years, I believe. Again, I'm not septic expert, uh, but I think it's around 40 years. So you probably want to ask the seller how old this is because this house, I believe, was like, built like 50 years ago let me see let me una memento let's see when this home was built this home was built in 1949 so 51 61 71 so your house is like 73 years old right so you want to see when the last time a new septic was put in and just kind of base it off of knowing uh, that you're probably going to get about 40 years out of those bad boys, right? So I don't know what condition it's in. I guess your inspector will tell you that. But, like, it's like roofs, right? Like, uh, doing real estate, I always ask sellers when they want me to sell their house or they want me to buy their house, I'd be like, how old is your roof? Because a roof is going to last about 30 years, just like a furnace, right? So I'll be like, how old's your roof or how old's your furnace? And their answer to me will be, it's good. Motherfucker, I didn't ask you... If your fucking furnace worked or if your roof leaked, I asked you how old it was. It's good. Not a fucking answer, man. Of course it's good. It's good till it's bad. Okay? A roof that is six years old that's probably going to last 30 years old that doesn't leak is good. But a roof that is like 24 years old that's probably going to last 30 years doesn't leak could also, I guess, be good. But the value's different there, right? One has probably got about 24 years of life left. One's got about six, right? Uh, so with your septic, you might want to just kind of figure out the age of your septic and then see when that uh, new septic is going to be need to be installed. And, you know, bank on, like I said, mine's like in the low 20s, but it's also for just like one house. Granted, it's like a very big house, so it's like a bigger system. You have smaller houses here, but you also have five of them. So I don't know. I've never ran a septic to like five houses. And again, I don't have a lot of info with uh, septics, but I would guess 20 is a good starting point, maybe more. I don't know. Uh, so just remember that. And uh, <clears throat> other than that, though, uh, the house is it's like a good deal, dude. You're you're out there. Good area. Right. I don't even know if I said the area. Uh, three, eight, nine, seven, three. Butternut Ridge, Elyria. That is the air. Uh, the area. I love Elyria. C grade neighborhood in Lorain County. I like Lorain County more than I like Cuyahoga County. Also, they're doing that new naval uh, like Naval Shipyard Base thing or something in Lorain County. There's going to be two of them. They're getting 4,000 new jobs out that way, right? So I'm really feeling Lorain. I like Lorain quite a bit. Um, so all told, I kind of went over the negatives for you, but the amount of money you're going to be able to kick off of this sucker, dude, it should be good. Right now, currently, they're renting it at 860, 645, 645, 645, 645. Long term, though, you should focus on what you're going to get long term. Long term, let's pop up the chart. You're looking at a thousand for the house, and each of those four cabins should bring in seven fifty, dude. So you're looking at forty eight grand a year uh, coming into you for gross rents, right? So after you run fixed and variable expenses, I think you'll clear a little over twenty five, and that's with a PM. But you're a local guy. Maybe you'll cut out the uh, four hundred dollars a month or the four thousand eight hundred dollars a year in PM fees, right? So this could make you as much as thirty k if you're doing the PM yourself. Now. I was talking about things like the age of your furnaces, the age of your roofs, the age of your septic tank, and how, you know, you got to just base it on how old they are, right? And know that that's like a reasonable timeline of when you need to replace them. So 
what we call that is capital expenditures, which every year for you, I have you taking $2,400 of money that's coming your way and considering that towards capital expenditures, right? That's like saving for when the furnaces go, for when the hot water tanks go, when the roofs go, when the septic goes, right? When the septic goes to shit. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> septic goes to shit. That's fucking funny, people! Fucking laugh! Ah! Anyway, in addition to that 2400 I also held back 2400 for vacancy and non-payment and another 2400 for repairs and maintenance, right? So that's... 6000 that's like $7,200 on top of that twenty five. which, again, that twenty five can really go up to thirty if you're managing it yourself, plus another seven. So you could really realistically be bringing home like thirty seven grand in uh, total profits to you, but know that those big bills are coming. Because of all that, that's why I believe you're not going to pick it up at one ninety nine. You told me you turned this uh, like with the listing agent or whatever. And you said there's a shit ton of people there. Yeah, this fucking makes a lot of money, bro. I don't think 199 is going to happen. I think you need to come in cash, 220, right? 220. 220 cash. I think you go cash here because, A, uh, it's going to be next to impossible uh, to get a, like a, a reasonable loan. Like commercial lenders, guys, once you get out of the, the residential space and you go to commercial properties, you got to get a commercial lender. Commercial lenders are not excited about having four cottages and a single-family home in their portfolio. You're going to get crap terms, and they're probably not really going to want a loan to you. And also, I'm pretty sure random owner-occupant or random like mom-and-pop landlord doesn't keep very good records. Uh, probably a lot of cash goes right in the pocket. Don't claim it on their taxes. So it's going to be a total shit show trying to get a commercial loan on this. So I think if you want to take the deal down, you should. It's a good deal. I think you're going to have to pay 220 and it's going to have to be cash. You do that, it's going to be a 12 cash. Right. As far as trying to get a loan, like what type of terms you can get, I don't know. You're going to have to talk to lenders, bro, but it's going to be a shit show. This is not a deal that makes lenders happy. One other thing you had asked me, uh, is it in a flood zone? And that could also be something that messes up things with your lenders because it is, but it isn't. Uh, I don't think you'll have an issue insuring this. We can insure it for you. Your quote may come back higher than uh, what I estimated on this chart of what I would think it would normally be, I'll have to like run that through underwriting to see what they come back, and we would need all your info, your social security, uh, credit history, and all that shit to do that. Because here's what you got, all right? The purple is a 100-year floodplain, all right? So that means like every 100 years, they're anticipating there's going to be a storm big enough to where it's going to flood, okay? Right? So like if it was yellow, that'd be 500, so... They wouldn't anticipate a storm that big flooding this area. It would take a bigger storm to flood an area with a 500-year floodplain, and they only come around like every 500 years. You get it? It's so like every 100 years they believe there is going to be a flood big enough to flood this part of your parcel, which is here. It starts at the street, goes all the way down. But your houses and stuff are pretty much all up here. So, like, your main house is technically not in a floodplain. And I believe the cottages are also outside of the floodplain. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. So everything is outside of the floodplain. So part of your parcel is in a floodplain, but that's all down here. Here are the end of your cottages, which are not in a floodplain. And then, of course, your house is up there. So I don't think... Uh, we will have an issue with insurance. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Like, I don't know if it gets flagged as, like, through the underwriting systems uh, of lenders and insurance people if, like, there's, like, some directory of cross-references and stuff where, like, the... Cause Technically, part of the parcel is in a floodplain, okay? So I don't know if they have it, like, attached to the parcel and it flags it in their internal systems. I don't know. I don't work IT for stuff like that uh, for insurance companies or lenders. But what I can tell you is the actual structures, the actual buildings on your parcel do not appear to be in the floodplain, even though half your parcel is in the floodplain, right? So all told... I think it's a good deal, bro. I think you should do it, and I think it's going to take 220 cash to take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.